Hi, my name is Gudrun from GE Designs. Welcome to our live show, Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Tipsy Tuesday show. Of course, thank you for being here. Tell us all you want to tell us in the comments. Say hi to your friends and tell us where you're tuning in from. We have a big day today, so I hope you are ready. Mr. HP is running the show, but whether you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, stick around till the end. We have a giveaway at the end of the show. Every show, you have a chance to answer a giveaway question and win $25 in a gift card to go shopping. And if you haven't done so yet, if you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button on YouTube or follow our page and make sure you get notified whenever we go live. We have a strip along starting today and so you wanna continue watching. Plus we have a great tip of the day. So lots and lots to talk about. I got some great fabrics to show you in the end. You wanna say hi to everybody? It's a big show, big show. Big show, really big show. Yes. Hi everybody, let's get ready to strip along. Strip along to strips and salsa. salsa. We don't have any chips and salsa. We should have had some chips and salsa. Maybe when we finish, we'll celebrate. Yeah, yeah for we'll sure. We'll celebrate. For sure. But our quilts hanging behind us today are, I have a June quilt behind me, the original. It's a large one, so it barely fits up on my wall here. But um, this one is used and loved here in our house. I took it off the bed because I'm gonna be showing you very similar fabrics um, that just came in today. And Mr. HP, you have also an original, an original, so original, it is the prototype of Billy. So it's the first one I made, uh, just using my Color Club fabrics. I love it, it's a different layout, but fun. Fun, fun to do. Yay. So uh, I hope you have been enjoying spring. It's springing, <laughs> spring is springing spring in most parts of uh, at least the United States. We just got back from Minnesota this weekend and you know, now it's full on summer weather here in Florida, but in Minnesota, it was nice. It was very springy. It was very nice. Yes. Yeah. I have to, have to say, that was great. But let's kick it off by announcing our winner from last week. Uh, the question I asked everybody was, what genre of books do you like to read? And our winner from last week's show. Drum roll, please. Drum roll is Judy Homrichhausen. Oh, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Judy. Congratulations. Uh, her favorite genre is mysteries. That's my girl. M mysteries. You, you I said, said miseries? You said miseries. I said mysteries. <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> mysteries. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Misery, mysteries. Mystery and suspense. That is where my faves are as well. But um, Judy just sent us an email to help at gquiltdesigns.com and we'll get you that gift card right away so you can go shopping. Misery was a good movie. Oh, yeah. That was a good mystery. <laughs> misery was That was good. almost like horror suspense. Not horror, but yeah. very suspenseful. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay, so I hope you all had a good weekend. I hope you're all ready for the eighth annual Strip Along, which we will, I will be kicking off part one. Last week I talked about fabrics and fabric choices and the prep you can do before we start today. Now this is something we're gonna be doing consecutively on, a few, on the next four shows, so it's gonna take a month. So no stress, if you haven't prepared, don't worry about it, you can always go back to the shows and watch the videos. But all you need, uh, of course, is the pattern, and we'll talk more about that a little later. We wanna start the show off with our tip of the day. Every Tuesday, I have a tip of the day for you. Uh, something, of course, quilting related or a good sewing tip. So here is a continuum from a couple weeks back. I am working on a t-shirt quilt, so I'm taking you through the steps that you need to do to be successful with your t-shirt quilt. Be successful and be creative. 
So uh, I showed you on the first tip of the day, two weeks ago, how to prep your t-shirts by applying that interfacing to the back of them to stabilize them because they are stretchy. And then now in this tip, I'm going to move to the next step is where I'm cutting up the t-shirts. In this video, I'd like to show you my tips on how to prepare your t-shirts or pieces of clothing that you want to include in your memorabilia quilt, whether that's a t-shirt quilt or maybe you're using other pieces of clothing, uh, something with emblems. And of course, the easy way is to cut all of your t-shirts the same size and just make a simple uh, pieces with same size blocks. I, however, like to have my blocks kind of filled with the actual emblem, with the actual memory, instead of having a lot of just solid background space from certain t-shirts. So the first step I do is take all of the t-shirts and then I sort them into a similar width. So for example, this one could be trimmed down to probably a 12 and a half would be the smallest. This could be trimmed too because I want to have at least a quarter inch when I sew. So I find all of the shirts that have a similar width. So this one has a similar width, even though it's a lot shorter, but all of the ones that have a similar width, I kind of sort them into different piles. So this would be about 12 inch blocks. So cut to 12 and a half. I have another stack here that would be about nine inch wide. And this just helped me when I start planning and designing the quilt. So best tools to use for doing this, for trimming up your blocks are of course the stripology rulers, either the squared or the XL ruler. So I like to take my squared ruler. If this is going to be 12 and a half inches wide, I like to center my, uh, use my center line on my ruler to center on this icon. Now, when you're working with stretchy fabrics and you have pressed that interfacing to the back, sometimes the images get a little stretched. So this probably used, was supposed to be a straight line and this is something that's printed on. So it's never gonna be a fully straight line. As I can see here, as I line this up, it kind of slants a little bit down on each side. And as long as it's slanting evenly on both sides, I don't really care. So I just want to make sure that I am evenly spaced from both sides. And even though normally we want to have clearance to get your cutter into the slits, I don't really need to do that right now. I'm just going to go right into the slit, the zero, and cut as far as I can on both sides and the 12 and a half. And then I just open this up and, and clear off here so I can hold this down and turn my piece. So now I can turn my piece and trim it the other way. Now, do you have to do 12 and a half? Absolutely not. It doesn't have to be a square. That's how I like to do things because I like to really fill in the space. Now, in this case, this is going to be a square because I only have that much clearance on each side. So now I'm just going to align the zero line here up with the bottom edge that I just trimmed. I make sure I have a uh, same clearance on, e clearance on each side and I make my cuts. And here is my block ready to be sewn into the quilt. This step I try to wait to do until I'm really ready to start sewing the quilt. If you trim all your blocks and you set them aside for a few weeks or months or even years, it has happened, they might become a little disheveled and not so crispy and um, well trimmed. So I like to do this right before. So now the same thing I would do, apply to the other ones, this would be cut 12 and a half inches this way, and then obviously shorter this way. I would sort them together, the same width blocks, um, sort them together until we get to the next phase, which is the really fun design phase.
Well, there it is. So uh, this is just how I like to do things. Of course, there are so many ways to make a t-shirt quilt. If you have a pattern, of course, follow that, how to cut your shirts. If you would like to have all of them the same size, square, rectangles, do that. Um, this is just a great way for me to organize them into kind of the same width units. And then I can play with that once I have all of my shirts. And I wanted to show you my, my two quilts that I have made for my boys. I guess the photos weren't in the right format, so I'm gonna fix that later on and I'll show you towards the end of the show. I can get to it <laughs> but if you have any questions of course I want to say that um, the stripology rulers are the absolute best thing to cut out anything like this fuzzy cutting can really decide and see how that image is going to fit inside your block uh, make sure you have room for your seam allowances and all of those good things so um, let me know if you have any questions do you have any questions um, over there, Mr. HP? No? Uh, somebody has about 50 t-shirts, so needing to get started. Believe me, I've been there. <laughs> been there. So now I'm getting started on my daughter's quilt, so taking you with me on that journey. Um, so if you have any questions, you can pop them in uh, the comments and I'll get to them later on. I'm gonna show you the other two quilts I made later on, so we will have some time to talk about that too. All right, uh, yesterday the part seven of London Calling went live, so which means we are halfway through London Calling. So once those of you participating possibly knew that this block was coming or this representation was coming, Pretty iconic. So part seven, our project or block parts are the, of course, Tower Bridge. Now you might be wondering, oh, that looks like it's not fully ready. Well, of course, we're keeping it in parts for now because uh, yeah, the layout is not gonna be revealed until the final, final part 14 of the London Calling blocks. But I can show you how it looks here. I have my blocks. So we made two tower parts or two uh, roof parts. Um, so it's, you're making two towers, of course. And then we have the tower part. Now it was really fun when we went to London. We went to go, um, got to go inside the towers and walk across. And then we have the actual bridge part here that will extend, of course, between the towers. And so we got to walk across the walkway. There's like a uh, see-through part, like a glass part that you walk on it and see down to the street below. Um, so this is fairly straightforward block to sew. Um, some of the bigger pieces than, than other blocks that we've been dealing with. So I think this one is gonna be pretty easy. And even though that roof looks kind of scary we've done that before so similar techniques so of course the video takes you through all the steps easy peasy so I'd love to hear if you're enjoying the London calling journey like I said this is halfway seven parts and um, seven to go we will finish our last part in October of no is it October or November but anyways November Yes, we started in October. So very exciting, uh, of course. Layout will still stay a mystery until then. So that is great. Um, I think I can it. Yeah? Oh, there they are. Okay, there are the t-shirt quilts. So this one is Yeastly's. So as you can see, he had a lot of shirts, so I tried to bunch them together. I, he had a couple of ones that had a little bit of red. Most of the other ones were yellow, no, were uh, white backgrounds with, with different print on it, but a lot of blue. So I always choose a background fabric that will be neutral, but still mix well with everything. So I added little bits of red throughout the quilt, you'll see it 
kind of in little strips to make the blocks the same size or uh, even out the rows and things like that. So it was fun. It was fun. So that bottom part was pretty much all collage and then um, these rows on the top. The blocks at the top, I made some Kira blocks. Uh, yeah, I made some Kira blocks at the top and they're made from his, um, his father's shirt, one of his shirts. Um, and he passed away when Geesley was in high school. So that was really, really a nice little incorporation. Now, the oldest has this one. So he graduated back in 2011. So this is the same thing. I made kind of different size blocks out of multiple t-shirts and other things. There's a pair of socks in there. Um, and then I just made some star blocks at the top to match that that big um, t-shirt on the top, Chan Hassan soccer. He was a soccer player all his life. So, so that was a lot of a lot of jerseys, of course. And Geesley was a gymnast, so there was a lot of gymnastic meat shirts <laughs> in there. Um, what kind of needle and thread did you use for the t-shirt quilts? I just used regular, what I use regularly. Now, you may consider using a, a like a jean needle, but actually using a Microtex or a Sharp is really helps um, penetrate all those thick layers. So I had no trouble with my regular Microtex or a, a sharp needle. Um, G needle might work, or um, also like a, uh, what is it called? Like a jersey or like a stretch needle, but it's not necessary because we treat our fabrics with the interfacing, so it really stabilizes them. Any tips for hockey jersey, jerseys, like a mesh material? So that one is a little tough. My daughter had a couple of those jerseys from volleyball, and um, I put the interfacing on the back, but I still didn't like the way it felt. So I actually, it was just a couple, so I took them out. So maybe think about just a little bit thicker interfacing, but sometimes those numbers and um, logos are really thick because they're, you know, those actual like labels. So just, you know, find that middle ground. I know it's been done, so no, try it with the regular, non-woven interfacing the thin one see if it gives you enough stability you know there's a lot of hockey kids oh there's a lot of hockey kids yeah so i know it's been done i have a bunch of hockey mom friends so they have done it before can you use sweatshirts yeah i use sweatshirts um in there like i said i even used like a pair like soccer socks the top part of it i used in there you know it's it's more about the memory and what seeing those items in the quilt is going to evoke. Uh, yes, I think I'm not, don't quote me on it being SF191. It is light fusible, um, non-woven interfacing. So we have that in the store. So check it out. We have it in three yard cuts because you need a lot for, for a t-shirt quilt. Okay, any more questions? Are we ready to dive into the strip along? I think so. I'm ready. So the first part of the strip along, we're going to get started with some of the cutting. I'm going to give you some tips on the cutting. Um, we're pretty much following the pattern, so make sure you have the strips and salsa pattern. If you still have, if you haven't gotten your pattern yet, um, I highly recommend ordering the PDF. The postal service is taking about 10 to 10 days to two weeks to ship if you only order a single pattern. Now, if you order it with something else, it's probably going to come faster, but that one pattern in an envelope is taking a long time is what we're experiencing. So the PDF is, of course, instant, and so make sure that you um, look closely which one you are getting. So I'm going to take you through some of the cutting. Um, I have a little alternate for scrappy, if you want to use a scrappy background. Um, and then I'm going to take you through this first part. That means how far I want you to go in the pattern, and then I'll answer all your questions. I decided to, to record this ahead of time so that I would make sure to get all of my, <laughs> all of my tips out. So let's take a look at our part one, part one of our Strip Along 2024.
Welcome to the first part of our strips and salsa quilt along. All you need to join us is to have the pattern either in a printed format or in a PDF. And then you just follow along for the next few sessions to complete your strips and salsa quilt. Now I'll be making two versions. I'm gonna make just a traditional version with one single background. And then my second one is gonna be a really scrappy background. So I'm gonna give you some suggestions for cutting your fabrics based on that. So I understand that in the pattern instructions, we start with a background fabric. And if you're doing the traditional using a single background, I suggest that you just follow the instructions there, cut your strips, and then you cut your rectangles and squares. I wanted to specifically show you a little tip on cutting the large squares. So I will be making my, the lap size quilt, and for these, the squares that we're gonna then cut into triangles for the blocks, they are seven inch squares, and I suggest you cut the square first and then subcut them into the triangles by cutting the squares apart. So if you can try and get seven or try and get three squares from the strip, that means you'll need 21 inches of usable fabric. So I am making sure that I can get that. How I, how I ensure that is seeing that I have just a little fabric here sticking out of the ruler because I'll be cutting on the edge of the ruler for my th fourth cut. So I know I can trim all my selvages off, so that's okay. For in the pattern, these are gonna be oversized, so it's okay if we get a little bit of selvage in there. I'm gonna cut through the zero, through the seven, 14, and then 21. That would be cutting on the edge of the ruler right here. So this way, you'll be able to get six squares from each strip. And then from there, we would be cutting these apart. And let me give you a little tip on cutting them apart. So both the XL ruler and the mini rulers have a little feature here on the edge. So you will see, hard to see, you will see this white dotted line going diagonally and then a white angle going out this way. It's white on the right side, it's black on the left side. So I recommend the right side if you're right-handed. So what you wanna do is align the edges of the square along, uh, along these white lines. What that will do, it will align your slit, your 20, 20 inch slit corner to corner from that square. Whenever we're cutting stuff apart, it's so much easier to line it up on a slit because we know we're not gonna veer off and ruin our fabric. So this way we're in a slit, the ruler holds everything in place and you'll be sure to be able to cut this without having any issues. Because sometimes also that tip of the, tr of the square will kind of veer off if we're trying to line a ruler just corner to corner. Now we're not gonna move this because we need to cut this twice diagonally. These are the seven inch, they're supposed to be cut twice diagonally. So we're gonna turn it and I'm lining this up again, same, same way, making sure I'm corner to corner. Yes, it's a little weird to do this sideways, but if you're right-handed, you can do it this way. Obviously, if you're left-handed, you would turn it the other way and cut it this way to have a better angle. So now we have our triangles. This is for the blocks that we're gonna need. And for the lap size in particular, you actually will have some squares left over. So what I recommend, if you have enough squares, do not cut the next size strip, which is six and three fourths. What I do with these, I would just make them a little smaller, six and three fourths both ways. I'm just gonna grab my uh, small ruler because that's a little bit easier, my squared. So what I'm doing is I'm aligning the dotted line here on the left side of the ruler 
with the edge because that is going to be my added quarter. And then I'm going to cut on the six and a half. That gives me a six and three fourths. So cutting through the six and a half. And I'm going to turn it and repeat. And that way you have a six and three quarter inch square. So this is perfect to do with the left with uh, if you have leftover of the larger squares. And then these are for the rows. So these are our corner squares for the rows. So they only get cut in half. So I'm gonna repeat what I did before and cut these in half. And based on whatever, whichever variation you are doing with a quilt, these are the ones that square off each row in our pattern here, so the, the squares here. So if you wanted to do a lap size, but wanted to do it horizontally, you will have an extra row. So you can do your calculations. You will just need a set of, um, two sets of squares for each side uh, if you're gonna do horizontal rows. But these I'm gonna set aside. So for their background, to be clear again, You'll need your large triangles for the uh, rows. You'll need your smaller triangles that are cut quarterly. So your straight long edge here is going to be your straighter grain. On this one, these two are the straighter grain. You're going to have your large squares, your rectangles, and then your small squares. So this is all we need from the background to get started. Now one option, because I'm going to be doing a scrappy version of my quilt with my background, so I'll be using lots of different grays for my background, grays and topes. So instead of having to cut a seven inch strip and getting a lot of triangles from that same fabric, I'm going to take a little shortcut for that because these are 45 degree right triangles that we need. So I'm gonna to go to my Master Your Astrobiology Rulers book. And instead of cutting those squares and cutting them apart, I'm gonna find um, on page 16, cutting the 45 degree, degree angles, the 45 degree right triangle sizes, there is a size for the seven inch. So I find my square size. That means I can cut a three and a half inch strip and then subcut it into those triangles. So I am gonna do that and show you how I do that real quick. I grab my ruler, and I'm just gonna cut that three and a half inch strip because I don't want to use each fabric too much. I want this an extra scrappy quilt. I'm gonna cut my three and a half inch strip, and then I'm just gonna cut a two and a half inch strip as well. So that means through the six so that I can get some of my other squares and rectangles from this one. I obviously will need some larger squares as well, but I might, I'm just gonna do that from a different fabric. So here I have my three and a half inch strip, and I'll lay it on my cutting mat at an angle at about a 45 degree angle. So you'll see I have my 45 degree line on my ruler that I'm now going to align with the bottom of my strip. So you can see that 45 degree line is aligned with the bottom of my strip. And then I'm gonna follow the chart in the book and I'm gonna cut through my first cuts, zero, five, 10, and 15. Now the strip is gonna be too short for the 15, but I am going to make my first cut, making sure that I have I'm gonna clear off my selvages here on the first cut. So through the zero and the five. Now the 10, I don't have enough room here under my ruler. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove that little remnant I cut. I'm gonna move the ruler up. So now that the 45 degree line is aligned with the top of the strip, I make sure everything is straight by looking at that line coming down from the zero slit, everything is lined up, I can make my 10 cut. I don't need to cut on the 15, like I said, because there's no fabric there. So now I'm gonna turn my ruler, and you turn it counterclockwise, 
90 degrees, so all the way 90 degrees. And now I find my other 45 degree line, and I'm going to start by lining it up with the top of the strip. Top of the strip here, and to make sure it's aligned perfectly, I follow it down this way, and then you have a straight line here, which is the 13 inch line here on the ruler that can align with this cut edge here. Now I'm going to do the same cuts through the zero, through the five. And now I can't do the 10 because it is underneath the slit. So again, I'm going to remove the first set of triangles here, slide my ruler down, and align the bottom of the strip along that 45 degree line. So I can remove this one too. And then I have this line here to line up with my cut edge and the 45 degree line here. Let me see, yep, this is looking good. Five, and then through the 10. So there it is, that 10 ended up not being quite big enough. Actually, I can still use that because these are oversized, so I'm okay if this is not perfect like this. But at least I get eight good triangles from a strip. Some, maybe you'll get 10, so I can possibly use the, these two. So that means for this background fabric, I would try and get what I need for each block. I would need, uh, because I need two for each block, so this will make eight blocks for me. So that means I want to get eight squares and eight rectangles from my strip, my two and a half inch strip. That's how I'm going to do the math if I'm doing um, scrappy backgrounds. Now I don't recommend this technique, it's a cool technique, but I don't recommend it if you're using the same background for everything because you're going to get better use of your fabric cutting it as described in the pattern. But let's move on to our strips. So our strips, um, hopefully you just have your two and a half inch strips. Now, we're not going to cut them all the same. And so the first decision you have to make before you start cutting is deciding on how many rows you're going to have in your quilt. Now for the lap size, if you're doing vertical, there are four rows. For um, the horizontal, there are five. So decide or Check the pattern for how many rows there are going to be. So that means that we are going to be making starter squares. And they are going to be the same number as the rows. So this quilt, I'm doing four rows. So I need four starter squares. So that means four of my strips are going to be cut differently than the rest. So for these, I'm just going to grab my two and a half inch strips that are salvage to salvage. And I'm going to cut them all the same. So you can stack them four up or however many you need for your starter squares. I've already cut one, so I'm going to just do three here. And for this one, you will follow the pattern um, just like it's talked about in the assorted strips. We need two size rectangles. I'm going to cut through the zero. What I always check before I start cutting is making sure all my strips are straight, following, landing on those lines on the ruler before I start cutting. So my, my cuts, uh, this is double layered, so I know I'm getting two out of each one. So I need a large triangle, a large rectangle and two small rectangles to match. So this is for my starter squares. And you want these to be from the same fabric for it to really look um, right in the quilt. Now these guys, leftovers, you could possibly use these, um, these leftovers if they're long enough for um, other blocks. So then each strip of these would be enough for one block. 
So I'm going to set them aside in case I need some more. So for your other strips that you need for the rest of your blocks, what you want to make sure that you get from each strip is four rectangles from the same fabric and a square. So you'll be using about 21 inches of fabric or 20 and a half usable. So you want to make sure that you have the same fabrics and that way you can, if you're using half width strips, 21 inch strips, you can get enough for one block out of a strip. If you're using full width, you should be able to get two blocks from each strip. So just do your math. If you're using scrap, you can play, play with it. Uh, of course, if you, if you want to use something that's shorter than 21, then you can probably try and pair up similar colors. But for the best look, I recommend this for each block. Now for this first part that we're going to be sewing today and your homework before next week, we're only going to be using one rectangle and one square from our colored fabric. So you want to make sure you set three aside for the part two. What we also need to use for this first part uh, for each half of the blocks is a background square and a background triangle that we cut the smaller triangles. So here is how we assemble this block. We start with our background square and a colored square. We're just going to sew these together and no matter what color your background is, I highly recommend pressing towards the background. So we're going to press our seams towards the background. And um, once we have that done, make sure you always look when you're following a pattern. I like to arrange my pieces according to the illustrations in the pattern or the book. So then we're going to take our rectangle. We're going to sew that to the right side, making sure that this unit is, is turned exactly as shown. So sewing this one to this side, sew down this way. We're going to press towards the rectangle. So now we're going to end up with this unit right here. See my seam here? Um, and from there, we are going to add our background triangle. So um, for this one, they are oversized. So what we want to do, we want to sew it to this side, just like is shown in the pattern. And this is in step three. So we want to take that 90 degree corner, place that right in the corner here, and just sew down this way. There's going to be quite the big triangle here on the overhang, which is all good. It's supposed to be oversized. So just sew down this way. And then again, when you're pressing, you want to be super careful, fold it out with your fingers and then go straight over it so that you should have a unit that looks exactly like that. So for this first part of our strip along, your homework is to make all of your starter squares based on how many you are doing, how many rows you are doing, and then you're going to be making all of your step threes as well. All right, yes, that was a long one, wasn't it? A lot of information taking you through the cutting, but of course, let's just narrow it down. Here's the cliff notes. If you're cutting your back, if you're using a single background, cut it just like the pattern says. And then if you have some leftover squares from those seven inch squares, you can use them up for the other set of squares. Okay. That was number one tip. Use your ruler to cut them apart. Number two. And then of course your strips for the scrappy part, they need, you need at least 20 and a half inches of usable fabric. That is the, how it needs to be cut. So 21 inches for each block. So a full width strip, 41 inches or 42 inches, um, is going to make two blocks. All right. So let's take some of the questions. Uh, oh, this is not pertaining to the quilt along. Uh, 
cross stitch squares. I have not, no experience in that, but somebody mm -hmm. asked about um, the interfacing that I use. I use a non-woven, some of the ones, some of you were commenting on a different interfacing. I think that is a Pellon one. I don't use Pellon, I use Bozel, and um, I have a number for it, so let me look at it. Uh, it is called 314B. So it's very lightweight, lightweight, fusible, non-woven. Um, okay, I'm planning on, on making a 72 inch long table runner instead of a quilt. Any suggestion on how to avoid cutting too much background fabric? Count your blocks and you know now exactly what units go into the block and then you can just cut as you go for that. Okay, so if you're thinking about how long is a 72 inch, so you can kind of go by the quilt measurements and how many blocks are in those rows and kind of figure it out from there. Okay, I thought I could use the original pattern that is in the stripology book, but that's for one and a half inch strips. That is not the original. This is the original. This came out in 2010, nine or 10. The, orig the, the book didn't come out till 2014. So this is the original. Always when we do strip alongs, we use the two and a half inch strips. Now it's the same, similar techniques uh, using the one and a half inch strips from the book but completely different sizes that you're cutting. So just make a note of that. So you can still follow along. So we need to starch our fabrics. I, I did do a little bit of starching on my background. I didn't starch my strips because they were already cut, but they were already um, pressed with steam and then cut accurately with my ruler, so I won't have any issues. It's completely optional. I would not start strips that are coming out of a pre-cut. Um, is the dotted line on the fabric or next to the fabric? So it is, you pr put it right on the cut of the fabric, not up against it, right on top of it. So split the difference between having it on top and next to it is right on it, on the cut. However, most of my patterns don't require that much accuracy. Those particular squares and triangles are oversized. So whether you're on the line, off the line, really does not make a huge difference. Okay, which way do you iron the first two squares, please? Press away, huh? Press away from the center. It's a, I said clearly press towards your background, towards your background on that first two squares. That's what the pattern says. Okay, are these instructions in my account or on this video? So. You need the pattern to get the instructions. So if you purchase the patterns, um, you will have the pattern in your account, your PDF, if you purchase a PDF. Uh, if you purchase the paper, you have to wait for it in the mail. Um, but the video will not be put into your account, no. It will not. The video will be living on Tipsy Tuesday. Remember, uh, we always have a blog specifically for any quilt along that we do. So go to our blog post that is specifically for the strip along. We will be adding the information to it, including the links to the videos. So you can always go back and watch them there. Do you use the piece you remove or is it a scrap? Now, I don't really know which piece that I removed. Um, if it was a little skinny piece I cut off, uh, that's a scrap. We're not gonna use that. If it was the triangles, when I was cutting the triangles, I'm using them. <laughs> okay, there's a picture of a layout that had two squares vertical, two squares horizontal, and so on. That's a different quilt. That's a completely different quilt. It's called Strip to be Square. This is Strips and Salsa, different quilt. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Do you have chapter marks? Yes, if you watch it on YouTube, we put in chapters so you can skip. Good information everywhere though, just saying. <laughs> okay, so let's um, be clear on the homework for, for this part one. We want you to make all of your um, starter squares. So depending on how many rows you're gonna have in your quilt, whether they're vertical or horizontal, you need same amount of starter squares as there are going to be rows. And then we want you to take it through all the way through 
the um, part or step three in the pattern. So you will have these units, which is going to make up half of your block. You want to assemble all of those depending on the size that you're making. Um, and then you're ready for part two next week. Can you make strip sets? So I'm, I'm assuming you're thinking for the squares, the little squares you put together. Now, from the strips, you're only making two of these from each long strip. So that really does not serve a purpose to make a strip set to cut it into two units. So that is actually not saving you any time, which is why we're not making any strip sets. OK? That's just how this one comes together. What was said about pre-cuts? I would not starch my pre-cuts because then you might get a chance of them shrinking too much and being way too small. So I would just press them, give them a good press, and then trim them using your stripology ruler, making sure that they are at least 20, two and a half inches wide, um, and so on. How many fat quarters do I need for the lap size? So that's all shown on the back of your pattern. There's um, a, a column on the bottom. It shows you how many fat quarters you need if you're not using strips. Okay, I don't think I have the back of my pattern here. So otherwise, I would tell you. All right, my cutting for the background says four and a half inch strips. No, you have the right pattern. I was showing you when I cut the two and a half inch strip. I was showing you a different thing. You need to cut both four and a half and two and a half inch strips, by the way. So I was showing you when I'm doing my scrappiness. That's what I'm going to do. Just giving you some tips if that's what you wanted to do as well. OK? All right. We good on questions? All right. All right, I think we're good. I'm excited to see all your quilts coming along because those are fabrics that you've been sharing in the crew are really, really cool. So, okay, an earlier question was about speaking, no, <laughs> pressing for the starter squares. Can you address that? Away from the center, away from the center. So press outwards on the starter squares. This one gets pressed, this two, this, this one gets pressed towards the background. The only one. Okay? Okay. We good? We're more than good. <laughs> awesome, awesome. All right, I wanted to um, tell you that we are headed to a trade show in uh, a couple of weeks in Chicago. It's called H&H and &H America, H &H America. So if we have any shop owners out there or business owners that are coming to H&H, &H, we're looking forward to seeing you. We're going to be in booth 1028. Um, and I'll be doing a little presentation on the learning stage on Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Um, and the learning stage is, is booth number 1600. So. I'm hoping I'll see some of some shop owners there. It's a it's a big show. It's a, a really unique show because it mixes both quilting and um, yarn, knitting and um, embroidery, soft crafts. So it, it really is fun to be in a different environment with more, um, I should say, industries that kind of have a little bit of uh, overlap or a lot of bit of an overlap. Um, but it's really always fun to see the energy. We went last year, uh, just me and Mr. HP, and walked the show, and it was really great. So I hear that now the quilting areas have taken off, and they have quadrupled the space for quilting. So we're excited to be vending and showing our shop owners what's coming up from us. So we'll have two new patterns. Yes. Awesome. Previewing there. We will show you later on, but um, that'll be a preview. So let us know if you're coming or you know somebody that is coming. This is only for trade, so it's only open for um, either distributors or shop owners. Can you answer that question? 
Are the starter squares a number three units? Number three units. I mean step three units. So the step three units are made from background and then your other strips that you cut. So they're not cut the same. You can't cut them from the same strip. So they're still all of your strips. So it's a really confusing question. I'm not sure what you completely mean. Um, you should. I had multiple strips of the same fabric, so if that's what you're confused about, seeing some of the same fabrics represented in my blocks, so I had multiples of the same fabric. So I'll have some that are going to match. Otherwise, it all, it's all based on what you have and what you're going to use. You can have them all different. OK? Great. Um, all right, so I wanted to show you some fabric, a little sneak peek. I am, got lucky enough to be sent some of Seth Apter's brand new line that is shipping later this year. And I got some sample yardage from Free Spirit. This line is called Live Out Loud. So you want to put that up. I'm going to go grab the fabric so I can show you a little sneak peek. I am going to be sewing out of this. Out of everybody, which is always very, very, very exciting. And so I wanted to show you, give you a little sneak peek. Yeah, I just went ahead and starched them all or added my sizing to it. So I haven't pressed them yet, so I apologize. But they are so gorgeous. So um, he is, of course, a mixed media artist. And this is called Live Out Loud. So um, you will see very much similarities between his fabrics and Tim Holtz. So we uh, have this bundle up for pre-sale right now, pre-order. So it's 12 pieces. I'm going to show you the pieces that are in the bundle. Love this one. Quite a, quite a bit, um, I think a little more color than the previous line, but still that rustic texture. So. This one, I love the distressing part. So you have parts of it that are very distressed and other that are darker. Then um, a teal line. This is called Major Cord. Is, um, the fabrics all have different names, which is kind of fun. I can't see it. This one is called Whirl. Sometimes I have it on the salvage, sometimes I don't because I only have half yards. And then this is Similar one as this blue one, but it is a smaller scale. I love this deep burgundy color. And then this one kind of goes with that one and it has the word moments here and there. So as you can see, this is very uh, much mixed, mixed media, but really cool. I love the distressing. This is something I have always loved. And then this one is called Truth. It has little words that says truth here and there. I love that. You can't barely see it, but it's really fun to hide little messages in quilts, isn't it? So in your fabric. And this one, this beautiful aqua turquoise, it says live out loud. It is um, kind of these strips. Um, of texture. It's like almost like skid marks, but so cool. Can't wait to cut these up. And then we have this one is called chips. And so it, it's a really deep brown uh, background. And we have this one in um, a light background, just a slightly different. This has all the colors. So it's your little paint chips. All the colors. We want to include all the colors. Don't discriminate around here. And then this one, one of my faves. Look within. It says, kind of here and there, lots of texture in this. Just gorgeous. And, oh, you know what? Some of you may know I am working on a new book. So I think it might be something for the new book. Oh, 
Like, yeah. Like that one. Like that one. <laughs> I see that. I see that. Write your own story. Love this. There's um, just typography here in the background, not really legible, but I love this. Uh, write your own story. We should all write our own stories. You're the only one who can. And then last but not least, another great texture, uh, a little bit larger than the other ones. Really reminds me almost of a batik when you step away, but up close it totally is not like a batik. So that is the 12 fabrics in Live Out Loud. Uh, as you can see, a little more contrast in this one than his first one, Storyboard, which by the way, we have just a few bundles left. So if you um, wanted to get your hands on his first line, check that out. Now there are a couple of other prints that we will get in one yard. And I didn't include it in the bundle just because for certain reasons. So this one is called, um, this one is called Brave and Beautiful. So it says um, Brave, Together, Beautiful, Alternating. And it's kind of like a scene, almost like a skyline. So this would be really cool, cool to incorporate into like a bag or something like that. So I figured it would be better off as a one yard. And then also we have one of his lighter background typography prints. That's going to be a one yard as well. So this one, past, present, future, out of the box, one day at a time, it's now or never. Um, yeah, just these little sentences alternating. What was the um, I don't remember. You'll see it on the website, an estimated ship date. I believe it is summer or early fall but I'm not 100% sure. We ordered this last uh, year, so maybe like July. But don't quote me on that, of course. Never quote me on stuff like that. <laughs> All right, what would you make out of this? You always ask me that question, what would you make? You could definitely throw in some dark backgrounds. Uh, you can put it on a white background or a white accent, so. That would be very cool to, to give it some contrast. So many great quilts I can make. All right, so we have some new fabrics as well. So we have a brand new bundle from um, Juicy Juice called Ink. And this is all neutrals with a little bit of blue. So starting here off on the light gray, it has a little bit of a texture. I don't know if you can see it, but just a slight texture. So these are great for um, just some basics. So here we have a little bit of line drawing on um, that light off-white texture. Love this. Connecting the dots. Another black and white. Now this is off-white, so it's not pure white. And this is light gray. Here we have a little light gray as well. We have a medium gray. Uh, so it really takes you through a range, and there's a, a little bit of a blue undertone to all of these grays, but great, great basics. Uh, I bet if you needed the right tone of gray, you could find it in this bundle. So another small texture, we have a little bit of a linear texture here in that dark, almost a tealish blue, and then the same print in the dark, navy here that we have here in the white <clears throat> and then we have this is the same as this one on almost black but again there's a quite a bit of a blue undertone to this and then i love this one so big circles with kind of a grid has a lot of layers and fun effect And, and then another linear one. So same as this blue one, but black with the gray on top. So this is ink, and there is one more fabric to this line, which is really unique and cool. So this 
is only available as one yards and three yards and there's a reason so salvage to salvage is these big stripes that have these smudgy edges and when i saw this my brain went firing um how cool would it be to cut strips to have these big stripes in a binding or a border uh, but then you could do so many things cut squares and you already have like two colors um, and I wanted to show you this quilt. This is a free pattern on the Andover website. So if you put that ink quilt up, it is very simple. It's free. It's just strips. But um, look at that border. I don't know if you can see it, but it's this print. So it's pretty much cut lengthwise with the white on the outside and the black on the inside. And so you have that surrounding your quilt like that which is super cool. So I thought that would be a really cool border treatment. You can, of course, turn it around, do the white on the inside and black on the outside. So I am definitely, definitely using this. I got myself a three yard so I can play with it some more. Uh, let's take a look at the fabric pull. Um, just pulled some same neutrals. We have dash flow in the Phantom. We have color wash and the texture charcoal, so a little bit darker gray. As you can see, these are very much in the gray category. Uh, bumbleberries in the indigo, so you see how much blue is in these colors. And then grunge in the picnic. Goes really nicely with these darker blues. For the medium grays, we did a grunge medium gray. And then a lighter one would be the mix in the smoke, which was a part of our color club. It's a perfect match with this, this gray here. And then a couple of fun ones that would be cool to put in here, Ravel in the Stitch Noir. That would be great to op put a little bit of typography in here. And then if you wanted a full on um, white, you can add that as well to get the full spectrum of, of uh, grayscale or colors. I would call this like almost a grayish blue scale. But of course, you can always throw some color in here. You can put chartreuse in here. You could put in some pink for an accent or a focus color. Um, of course, you can put some turquoise or teal. That would be really, really cool. So play with it. Don't always think that because it is a black and white that it has to stay black and white. Is this a pre-order? This ink is not a pre-order anymore. No, this is in stock. It's in stock, folks. It's in stock, yes. The Live Out Loud is a pre-order, and so um, just know you, you order it now, and then we'll just ship it as soon as it comes in. Now, with a pre-order, remember, you always get $5 off when you pre-order fabric. That's our little special. Okay, I have one more fabric. I know it's getting late, but... I got to show you this one because I have that quilt behind me and this is flirtation. This is Zen chic and a uh, really fun color. So very similar to the one Dance in Paris it was the fabric that I used for my June quilt. So very similar color story. This is the main print. Of course, I love the extra colors in here, but I stuck with a bundle being just the deep navies, the blues and teals, and, the, and then the greens. So here is another, it has a little bit of a gold metallic in it too. So this line has just specks of gold metallic, not all the prints, but just some of the prints. So we'll start in here with the blues, just a little speck on a different, on a little bit of a textured background. Uh, and then we have these circles that have some of the teal in there. We have a geometric print, really cool one. This looks like a really cool quilting pattern. You long armorers are gonna notice that. And then we have that same circle print in the lighter turquoise or blue, light blue. We have the big, big irregular, irregular uh, polka dots, love that, with just the specks of gold in there. We have the geometric again in the teal. So I love that there is a little bit of a difference in the blues as well. And then I threw in a spotted. So this is a new spotted that came out with this line. Perfect blue in there. 
And in the greens, we have that main print again in the green background, a little bit of gold metallic. You know, who doesn't love a little sparkle? Should be its own color. And then we have these oblong shapes. Kind of look like pills. <laughs> yeah, or candies. Eggs. Or eggs, yeah. Mm hmm We have the circle print again, which is so fun, in the green. And then finishing it off with a brand new green and the spotted. So kind of a chartreuse. So we have all the colors here. 12 piece bundle. And like I said, very similar color story as I used in my June quilt. And I used a um, off white background with a little bit of gold metallic. So let's take a look at my fabric pull. I pulled in some teal. So this is dreams in the island blue. And then the chalk and charcoal in the regatta. And for a little bit of that lighter tone, the spectrostatic in the baby blue is a great match. Works really nicely. For the dark navies, I chose the suede. Um, this was a color club. And then the dimples in the midnight hour. Beautiful, deep, deep navy. For the greens, we have another dreams in the chartreuse, which is a great color match. And then also the thatched in the chartreuse. So then I threw in some uh, accent colors and backgrounds. So focus colors that you can use. I love this one, a color wash scratch in the magenta for some of that deeper magenta tones. For a little bit of the lighter pink, um, pinkish lavender, I use the uh, Bumblebee's light lavender. So you'll see that sprinkled out the, throughout the fabrics as well. Or using that peach color, the grunge and the cobbler is a great choice. So any of these would be great as a little focus. For a background, I would do something fun. I love this. It's also a Zen Chic from the bluish line, the scissors and the chalk. So it has a little bit of a bluish gray undertone to it. So it would be a great choice, especially if you're using a lot of background with those fun scissors. Or this one is called More Spaced Out Shapes, and it does have gray shapes on it, but that would be a great one. It would stand out from all of these great colors and be a great background. Flirtation by Zen Chic. Isn't that awesome? So this is a four show week here at GE Designs. Four show week. So I'm here with you today. Tomorrow morning, Colleen will be here with uh, One Yard Wednesday, some specials on our One Yards. And then Thursday, 9.30 a.m., Perfect pair with Nancy and Kara, so make sure you tune in. I think they're going to have some special guests. And uh, we will, of course, be back here a week from today with part two of our uh, strip along. That is going to be Tuesday, April 23rd um, at 4 p.m. Central Time. And then we have Friday. Friday, happy Friday, of course. That's April 19th. That's our fourth show of the week. Yes. Wow. But let's finish with our giveaway question. So um, you can all go have some dinner. What is, I noticed this on my walk this morning. It is spring, so a lot of trees are flowering. So what is your favorite flowering tree? Now, of course, very, very different trees flowering in Minnesota than there are down here. I'm really enjoying seeing flowering orchid trees. They are just gorgeous flowering magnolia trees everywhere, and all these other tree names that I don't even know and I'm learning about from being in a different climate, and I absolutely love it. I think I need to get me one for my front yard. So uh, tell us, what is your favorite flowering tree? My favorite used to be the crab apple trees in Minnesota. A um, little bit early now, but next month it'll be coming in. And then, of course, the lilacs. Who can, the lilacs who can live without the favorite. lilacs? Hmm? That's my favorite. That's your favorite, yeah. yes. But that's our show. Just answer in the comments. You're automatically entered for that giveaway, and we'll announce the winners on our next show next week. That is April 23rd. So thank you all for sticking with us for this extra long show. 
I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Bye everybody.